So you're a landlord writing up your very first lease, or maybe you're a tenant and you're reading over your first lease in Cambridge or Somerville, Massachusetts. Did you know, however, that there's actually another type of document called a tenancy at will, different from a lease? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys the fixed term lease and tenancy at will, the two types of agreements you can enter into, whether you're a landlord or you're a tenant. And then I'm gonna break down the pluses and minuses of each. If you guys don't know me, my name is Sage Jankowitz. I'm a realtor based in Cambridge and Somerville, Massachusetts. I've closed over 300 transactions in the last three years. If you guys like what you're seeing, please take a second to hit that subscribe below. I always have a 15 minute free Calendly link if you want to ever talk to me have any questions whatsoever. But before we get into the video, two quick caveats that you must know. The first is this video is specific to Massachusetts. Please understand that the rules for tenants and landlords, they vary wildly by state. I'm very familiar with Massachusetts rules, but if you go even into Rhode Island or New Hampshire, the rules are wildly different. I don't know anything about them, so don't come to me. But in Massachusetts, I have a pretty good understanding. That's the first thing. Number two, it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it to be very, very clear here. I am not an attorney. Do not take this video in any way as legal advice. If you have a legal question, you should go to a real estate attorney. If you don't know a good tenant landlord real estate attorney, I know multiple that are excellent. Hit me up on Calendly, on my cell phone, you can text me, I'm happy to provide one. So please take that into account before you watch this video. All right, let's get into it now. So the first type of agreement that we most commonly see and that the vast majority of landlords and tenants sign each year is a lease. And I most commonly sign a fixed term lease, meaning it's a lease for a fixed period of time. And the lease will have some typical things. It's gonna have the owner's name, it's gonna have the owner's address and contact details. The only exception, of course, would be if the owner hired a management company, in which case the manager's information will be there. You're gonna have the tenant's name, the amount of rent, when it's due, and a lot of other additional provisions. It's typically for a 12 month period and or a lease that ends end of August. That's sort of the most common bread and butter situation that a lot of tenants will see and sign. Now there's a number of key obligations both for the landlord and the tenant when we're dealing with a lease. Number one, the tenants must pay the listed rent each month for the entire term of the lease. So if you have a 12 month lease, it's $2,000. Every month they have to pay $2,000 until the lease ends. Secondly, the owner must provide housing to that tenant for the entire term of the lease. If you sign a 12 month lease, after six months, the owner can't be like, I'm good. If the owner sells, they still have to pass that lease on to the new owner and they need to realize the term of the lease too. Okay, so you're really locked in both you, the owner, and you, the tenant, for the entire term of the lease. The lease must include a couple key pieces of information, the name, address, and phone number of the owner. Again, the only example where it might be a little different is the person responsible for maintenance, if it's not the owner, should be listed. And then the person whom the tenant can give copies of formal notice, if that's different. Generally speaking, it will be directly to the owner. Again, if not the owner, they'll give the notice to the management company. The owner must also give the tenant a legible copy of the lease to the tenant. That's a really important one. I have seen occasionally situations where an owner refused to give a copy of the lease. That's a big no-no. As an owner, you can get in a lot of trouble. It's also a really crummy thing to do. So what are the big pluses of a fixed term lease? Generally speaking, a lease tends to be a little more formal. Everything is spelled out in very clear language. I'm a big fan of this because there's very little left to the imagination in a well-written lease. The expectations of both the owner and tenant should be spelled out. Both sides will have a chance to read everything over and understand exactly what they should be doing. The second thing is there's a level of peace of mind. They tend to be longer term, so you don't have to worry at any moment, could the rent change? Could I be kicked out? Could this, my living situation change? For a lot of people, they're gonna have to go through a process of paying a lot of money up front in Cambridge or Somerville. They're gonna have to pay a lot of money to move things in and get settled. You don't wanna feel like at any moment the rug could be pulled out from under you for most people in most situations. And then finally, it tends to be a more formal process. Everything is, again, spelled out very clearly. So for all those reasons, it can be a real positive to sign that fixed term longer term lease. What about the minuses of a lease? Well, in my opinion, I think the one potential minus is you're now, both sides are now locked in for a long period of time. So let's say a month in, you as a tenant, you're like, whoa, this isn't what I expected, I'm not happy. Well, now you're locked in for probably about a year. 
Same goes for the owner. If you start running into issues with the tenant and they don't want to leave the property, maybe they're damaging the property, maybe they're screaming and yelling at three in the morning every night and your neighbors are complaining. Well, you're locked into the long term and it can be really difficult to potentially get out of things. So that is the one potential minus. I will say, in my experience, that is relatively rare, but it certainly can happen and is certainly something to be aware of. All right, so we went over the lease. Now that's probably not why you're watching this video. Most people are probably at least pretty familiar with how a lease works, but there is that other document and that's called a tenancy at will. And a tenancy at will works a little bit differently. First of all, a tenancy at will does not have to be in writing, whereas a lease definitely needs to be in writing. A tenancy at will does not. And so the most common example of how a tenancy at will can be created without anything in writing, what can happen is if you have, let's say a 12 month fixed term lease, the lease expires and you kind of just have a handshake deal or you don't do anything and you stay, you keep paying rent, the owner's okay with it. Automatically, when the lease ends, if you do not renew that lease, but you stay there, it becomes a tenancy at will. The way a tenancy at will works is either side, either the tenant or the owner have 30 days notice and they can be out of there. And I believe it's either 30 days notice or notice from the payment period 30 days. So for instance, if you know your payment period is on the first of each month, if you give notice anytime before the first of each month, the following first, you would have to be out of there. Now, if you're in a situation where right out of the gate, an owner wants to do a tenancy at will, typically a document is signed. It tends to be a one or two page, more minimal document compared to a lease. It usually has some basic provisions that the owner will write in, but I find it to be a much shorter document it has a lot less legalese typically. It only has a couple provisions typically, although it doesn't have to. All right, so now let's get into the pluses and minuses for a tenancy at will. First, the pluses. Now, if both parties want complete flexibility, this option can make a lot of sense. Again, either the owner or the tenant can easily provide that notice at any point and roughly 30-ish days later, they can be out of there. If you're someone where your schedule's up in the air as a tenant, this can be a really good option. I often find that usually owners and or tenants who have had a very bad experience in the past, they might be scarred from that experience and in their mind to protect themselves, they want that flexibility. So in some ways they can provide peace of mind knowing that you can provide that notice at any time. Oftentimes it's also a very easy clean experience. Some people are kind of old school. They don't want to deal with a lease. They don't want to deal with a lot of documents. Generally, I'm a big fan of documents, get everything in writing, but some people like that. The final thing I would just say about Tennessee, I guess you could say is a positive, is it's just a very digestible document. If there is one, it tends to be much easier to read. So so you don't have to be a genius to kind of read through this and understand the terms of the lease, where I have seen some fixed term leases that can be four pages with another five pages of addendums, and it can be kind of complicated. And sometimes they're not always prepared correctly. And sometimes there's conflicting information and it can be very confusing. So in some ways it can be easier to understand at least the terms of what you're getting into. All right, let's get into the minuses now of a tenancy at will. And I think there are a couple that you should be aware of. The first thing is of course the owner can provide 30 days notice. You know, the owner can decide they want to move back into your unit. Maybe they want to have a family member move in. Maybe they want to sell and get you out of there and have the property vacant. As a tenant, that can be a really stressful experience. If you just got settled and then 60 days later, they make a change of heart, it can be a real pain in the butt. So I find that tenancies at will are better if you're someone who maybe you're living out of a backpack or you like the flexibility, but that is a negative that you need to be aware of. Another big negative to keep in mind is from the owner's perspective, it can be really challenging. If a tenant decides to give their 30 days notice and it's the dead of winter, for example, you as an owner could be really screwed. And what I mean by this is the rental market is extremely seasonal. If a tenant were to provide 30 days notice and say December, there's a good chance that you could be in a situation where you get no rent for two, three, four months, or you have to heavily discount your rent to a rate that is significantly below what you'd be getting in the on season time, costing you thousands of dollars. So you need to really understand the potential risk here as an owner versus the potential upside of having that flexibility before you go into a tenancy at will. 
A couple key points for both that I just want to stress here, whether you do a tenancy at will or fixed term lease, there's a couple key points here that you're going to have to follow. Regardless of which one you go with, owners must always follow the state sanitary code rules and regulations. Just because you have a tenancy at will and have flexibility doesn't mean you can stop following these rules. And this means, you know, if there's sewage in the basement, it needs to be cleaned up and needs to be cleaned up right away. If there's, I don't know, water coming from the unit above you, you need to take care of that. If the heat isn't working, you need to take care of that. Secondly, the tenants are always responsible for damage beyond normal wear and tear. And you know, there is a little bit of a gray area, but I think from my perspective, use common sense. If you punched a giant hole in the wall or your friend came over and got drunk and punched a hole in the wall, that would be your responsibility. On the other hand, if you have some light scuff marks on the floors because you lived in there for five years, that's probably normal wear and tear. Also, while the owners have the right to enter for repairs, and of course, emergencies and showings and that kind of thing. Be respectful of the tenants. Try to provide notice that's reasonable. Don't just show up unannounced. Make sure you give proper notice and get the thumbs up. Work with your tenants. It's a pretty basic thing. I see a lot of times where owners don't provide the right notice or an agent doesn't provide the right notice. And it really just leads to a lose-lose situation. The tenant gets annoyed. They're less likely to allow you in in the future. The owner gets annoyed and it's just a lose-lose. So just be reasonable on both sides. And I think there's a lot of wins that can take place there. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. I hope you understand now the pluses and minuses of a tenancy at will versus the fixed term lease. If you weren't able to tell, I generally recommend fixed term leases, although I understand situations where due, again, typically to some traumatic thing that happened in the past, why a tenant or owner might want a tenancy at will, or if there may be a new landlord, why they might want to start with a tenancy at will. I think there can be benefits in unique situations. Hit me up on Calendly if you have any questions. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.